Hello, my name is Lucas Atencio, and I'm representing Group 11 for Cadbury Schweppes case study. So the first question was, as a board member, would we approve of the bid for $4 billion? And this was a, a really good discussion between our group, and really what it came down to is that, would we approve the bid? And it was no. Um, it appears, so the first thing that we came to was just like the cost. Um, it, and it really came down to whether or not it would be profitable and it just doesn't seem like that it would be um, it looks like it's going to be at least 15 times EBITDA and no positive um, return on the investment for at least and almost until six for six years and it really relied on a broad range of synergies and assumptions that had yet to be realized um, it's really unrealistic to, to assume a seven percent growth rate um, one of the other things that we talked about it is, is that it really appeared that Sunderland had a vision for Cadbury to be the biggest confectioner in the world at any cost and that he hired uh, Todd Stifler to, with that vision in mind. So there, he also figured that there was probably some executive incentive that was tied to the size of the company and other uh, like the market cap or the value of the stock, et cetera, which was driving um, Sunderland's desire to be the biggest. So in this case, the desire to be the biggest uh, with one acquisition appears to be at odds with uh, uh, profitability and it relies on a broad spectrum of synergies and assumptions that would be uh, unlikely to be fully realized. So um, yeah, as board members, we would, we would not approve of that bid. The next question was, what was our assessment of the strategic fit? This, the fit would have been fine. Um, you know, the chocolate and gun segments within the confectionery would have, would have done well. However, what it comes down to is that other confectioners have been uh, proven successful without the combination of gum and chocolate production. And again, the price was just too high. Um, and the third question, does the Synergy plans make it more or less likely that we would support the bid? So after looking at all of the analysis, um, we think that it was just unrealistic and it would probably make us less likely to approve the big because it seems like a broad spectrum of conditions needed to be realized in order for the company to fully capture the value of the synergies. So um, in that case, it seems unlikely that all or even most of the conditions would be realized. Furthermore, the broad spectrum of synergies that must be realized makes it seem like that this uh, merger um, they were they were reaching for potential synergies to strengthen their case for such a, a high cost of merger. Um, so less likely, and one of the things that we, we definitely discussed was that more than half of the value of the potential synergies were rated as difficult to execute. And it just feels like management was reaching. Um, which brings us into our, the next question, how much money would we pay for this? Uh, this, was, this was a harder one for us. We've definitely uh, looked at all of the, the, the information that was given. Um, and it really, we, would, we had to go with how much Cadbury had traditionally paid for acquisitions. And we looked at their base price plus 50% of the cost synergies to come up with a ballpark of about 3 billion to 3.6 billion. Um, and that really also depended on like, uh, it depended on more realistic or conservative growth project projections. So 7% just seemed to be high. So our estimated weighted average chance of realizing the synergies was between 57 and 71%. So this equates to an EMV of between 2.7075 billion and 2.5 billion. So at a price point of 4 billion, that represents at least 14% or 14 times EBITDA. Um, it, that's just too high. So we needed to bring it down. The four pro forma model rests on the assumption of 7% growth for Adams, which is something that Cadbury had never done. So, Cadbury was in a serious, and also the last point was that Cadbury was in serious competition with Nestle, which is, you know, it's, it, Nestle was a much bigger company. And in this auction, a red flag was the price that was likely to, um, that they were going to have to end up uh, paying more than it was worth. So what it comes down to and what we've decided was 
Sunderland and Stifler were narrowly focused on being the biggest without um, not wanting to focus on how they were going to pay for it. And they saw that opportunity and they just set their minds on it and, and really pushed for it. So at the end of the day, we think that um, they would have overpaid for this. Thank you.